Okay, everybody, we're back. We've got audio issues hopefully resolved. I'm gonna get video issues resolved while Fedor is talking, but at least you can see Fedor, and that's the most important thing. So, Fedor, we left off. You're, you've been obviously you came into the poker world, made the biggest explosion in the world, and since then we have just been terribly missing you and wondering what's been going on. But I know that you're working on a ton of things and. Um, a lot of just sort of next level things, some of which involve poker, some of which are outside of the poker space. So for those listening and watching, let's talk about what's kind of inspiring you now. What are the things that you're working on now? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, after I scaled down my poker traveling and playing, I started investing in companies um, and build companies myself, so Prime Mind and um, a couple other companies. And also now, um, I'm quite passionate about poker codes. So launching a poker course um, that took quite some time to set up, but I'm very excited about that coming up soon. So we're launching I'm launching a masterclass, basically where I share everything, like not holding anything back. Um, also collaborating with Matthias there. That's another thing, and then. Um, one of the things that I've put on the most time right now is a community space that I launched in Vienna and uh, I'm very excited about to bring together some pretty amazing people. So these are like the main things I'm working on. Okay. First of all, pump the brakes for a second. Did you just say that you're going to do a master class where you're going to reveal all the secrets? Basically, yeah. Uh, because I feel like everyone needs to know about that. Uh, <laughs> how can we get involved? When can we expect to see this? Uh, what? <laughs> like, this is what everyone wants, right? I mean, I've been teasing a bit about it uh, in my social media. Um, so basically, I thought I started thinking about this like in 2016 and um, 2017. Like, I already had some ideas, but like now it took over two years to actually like find a setup that I would feel really good about. And um, it's basically, it's, I'm super happy with it because I worked together um, on it with Matthias Eibingers, like who's crushing right now, like in the high rollers. And he basically provided all the technical content behind and um, I edit in all my life experience and my interpretation and I guide through the whole course like didactically. So it's going to be more than 10 hours of basically every single topic you can think about in poker and explaining them in depth. So it's, it's, I, I believe it's going to be the best content ever put out in poker, so I'm excited. Wow, okay. And so is this going to be, how will people be able to access this? Some sort of a website? Yeah, so we're um, actually launching soon. So right now um, we are almost finished with the post-production. Uh, we're going to go into pre-sale soon, so you'll be able to get like some of the first uh, um, pieces and uh, yeah, it's, I'm I'm gonna fly to Vegas next week, um, and I hopefully hopefully at the end of July we have it we have it done. So yeah, it's gonna be pretty epic. Wow! Oh my gosh, that's like the best news ever for for everyone. Right. And then are you guys creating stuff with like video or? I, mean, yeah. I guess I'm trying to understand, like, obviously the content itself will be different, but how, in terms mm. of the structuring of the content, um, how are you guys piecing that together? So the thing that's really cool about it, a good friend of mine is a successful entrepreneur who basically built like a plat like an educational learning platform that um, they're having quite a lot of success with now. And so we collaborated with him where we utilize his platform. So it's an interactive platform where it's, sectioned into the different lectures on all the different topics it's like really easy to find your way around and then you also have quizzes where you can relearn you, you have way to note down notes on the way there's like going to be questions they can ask there's a lot of features in that platform where you can basically not only consume the content but also interactively improve the way you can learn and jump in back and forth and um yeah i think it's going to be really nice i haven't uh, tested the final version yet, but everything I've seen so far looks uh, just amazing. Wow. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Matthias and, you know, for those maybe who are less familiar with him or what, obviously you have a, an awesome group of friends and colleagues. And so what, what to you made sense? Like, why is this the person you said, yeah, we got to partner mm -hmm. together for this? It's really cool because when I, 
when I um, started talking to him, I had a good feeling, but actually when we started working together and he revealed all his secrets and gave me insights into everything he's worked on and all like all the research he's done, I was, I was so happy I, I worked with him because it's really, there. I think there's no person in this world who has done as in-depth work in poker, or at least less than five as he did. And so getting access to all that knowledge, the research, like it's a, like thousands of hours of work that went into that. And he's basically one of the best players in the world right now. So it's, uh, it's pretty legit. Wow. And that's obviously a huge, you know, a huge compliment coming from, from you. Um, well, let's talk about this, the, this workspace sort of this, this mm. space is something that you've been talking about for, I mean, since I saw you maybe six months ago. Um, talk a little bit about what's what's the inspiration there, and what is what does this look like? It seems a bit obscure, maybe for people who mm. who don't understand. I mean, it's in some ways it's also still obscure to me, but it's born out of the an, a feeling of really. I'm just really getting excited by asking questions and continuously exploring new thoughts and ideas and questioning the status quo and thinking about, okay, how can alternative futures look and how are we going to organize in the future and how do we deal with all the challenges that are coming up? And I really believe that that type of consciousness, not only for ourselves, so like how do we feel, what's important to us, what are our values, but also um, for our environment, not only if in an environmental sense, but also in a, in a social sense. So like, how do we, how will we collaborate in the future? How do we make decisions? I mean, we see that right now, the more, there's more information available, the world's getting more and more connected. Everything's speeding up exponentially. There's a lot of new technology that um, will have a huge impact um, on, on us as humans and as a species. And I really think that that type of consciousness is very, very substantial for us to be like properly dealing with, with these topics in the future. And so, I following that passion and collaboration and exploring all these new ideas and thoughts and potentially also systems come up with new systems and ideas that that really is centered in that space and um, that's basically the, the organization or company or project that we're building right now and um, where I invest the majority of my time. So in in Fedor's sort of view and vision of, of this space that you're creating, what are the types of things that you think can be easily integrated or seamlessly um, mm -hmm. kind of work together? Are we talking art? Are we talking, you know, film and television? We're talking engineering, mathematics? Like, you know, what do you see as the spaces that will be working together there? Yeah, so... So one of the things, um, the, the way I think about it is I want it to be bigger than anything we can curate or think about. So it's more, I see our role more in kicking this off and really setting the framework and creating that space, like setting that foundation where people then can um, like have that freedom to actually, Sarah, are you gone? No, I'm here, I'm here. Okay, uh, your video just turned off. Um, so, to basically to set that freedom for for people to just you know ask these questions more actively and and be less um, distracted by their surroundings or noise or like you know things that they struggle with so really take that away basically and create a strong support system to be able to think more freely and so specifically that means I want to I want to start with topics and, and showcase that so that you can experience it that are really strongly vertically integrated into our society so things that I think are in that category are, for example, food. Like we all eat at some point. We all, you know, have some opinion or, or perspective or experience with food. I think health is a huge topic, like around movement, recovery, sleep, um, nutrition, mindset, like everything that in that category. But also education is a huge topic, um, learning, collabor collaboration. And, um, and then there's a lot of different other topics that you mentioned around art, music and science, tech, like a lot of um, additions, but I think all these new topics, we want to create that platform where these can evolve. So the beginning is we want to curate 
um, and started with topics like education and, and health, food and farming, where um, we kind of set an experience for you to understand, okay, what what is it that we want to create in that space for people then to jump onto that train, be able to come up with new ideas and hopefully come up with things we haven't even thought about. Wow. So in terms of how you're working and who you're working with to build a space like this. I mean, obviously the idea itself, uh, beyond being sort of abstract, it's it's really grandiose, right? But it, in the the micro, in the day to day, in the okay, we're choosing to start say with food. Um, how are you finding the people to work with, and who who are you kind of starting with to to build this mm-hmm. initial project? So, um, on the one side, there's like my team, where for me it's really important that we have that in depth, integrated um, knowledge or, or expertise as well. So, for example, we have a chef in our team who's basically only working on the topic food, um, where we like scouting now both local but also global partners. So, we work together with some of the leading nutritionists in the world. We're working together with also local farmers, like. Um, like really the, the leading people in a local area as well that are that are dealing with um, like ecological organic farming and really are way ahead of the curve in that area. So like we're basically looking in all directions to build that really high quality infrastructure in that area and it's bundled in that skilled person in our team. Wow, I think especially right now it's so interesting. Food is such a huge topic especially in terms of the future when you look at how you not when you look at how gmo essentially even just in the course of the last decade has changed not only how we eat but how natural things are are able to continue to grow really it's so crazy when you see like one gmo farm how it affects because everything is so connected right it then those birds drop those you know toxic weird poisonous seeds just right down the road and how we're i mean are we ever even going to be able to have food that is real and comes from the earth so it is something i think that's like super essential for people to start talking about and thinking about now before it's too late and it totally agree and it could be soon, which is so crazy. Okay, so you, obviously, because we had so many technical problems, and I know you're a busy man who has lots to do and you have to go, but you are, in fact, going to come to Las Vegas soon? Yes, so um, I think I land the 3rd of July. Um, I'm there with a couple of friends who um, who are really passionate about poker, like they are more entrepreneurs, but... Um, I'm quite pretty excited actually, I'm, especially after doing the course, like I spend a lot of time with poker content, but not so much with playing the first half of the year. So I'm pretty excited to actually get back in the ring and play some poker. I was going to ask you, so obviously you're super busy and creating this course has you thinking about poker, but have you been playing poker really at all? Um, I have not played much. I played some online actually. Um, but live, I can't wait to get back into it uh, and play some. And you're going to play the main event? Exactly. Anything else on the docket? Um, I've scouted a couple of things, um, but it obviously depends if I make D7 or not. So uh, um, that's the goal for now. So let's see if I can follow up. How sick would that be? Come on. <laughs> the poker world would just die. Like, just give up right now. Uh, okay, That's kind well, of, uh, let's say kind of a scenario. If, if the people who are listening or the people who find this, you know, are interested in A, getting in, involved or, or participating in your course and also mm. getting involved in or learning more about this community sort of that you're building um wh- where can people find you where can they find more information about this stuff where where are the resources that people can look to to dig deeper mm-hmm. so the um, course i'm launching you can find everything regarding that on pokercode.com you'll also find it like on social media you can follow me on twitter at chrono guy or um, on instagram at feeder holes and regarding the space we're building it's going to be called under the tree um, it's basically combining that diversity, but also with that creativity and uh, and really asking these these tough questions. And um, you will find us on at underthetree.io. So you can sign up there. We're gonna keep you posted. And if you're interested, um, 
reach out to us. So in in either case, uh, we're happy to hear from you. Wow. Well, I for one know that the poker community is going to just die that there's going to be a poker course that you were involved yeah. in in some way. Even the first time we came on and you were talking and people couldn't hear, they were like, the secrets to the poker universe are probably being revealed right now and we can't hear him. So <laughs> don't worry, folks. It's all going to be out there and accessible to you. Um, has there been any uh, questions or negative feedback as to, I think a lot of poker players, especially in your position, are very tight with information and very worried about, you know, releasing the secrets, if if you will, or <laughs> as it were. So has there been any hesitation or have you gotten any bad feedback about really revealing all this stuff? Mm, not yet, but um, I also haven't spoken like too many people about it. I personally think like I feel great about it because I really felt like uh, it, it felt like it feels like a great moment for me. I feel I can still provide a ton of people a lot of value, and I also didn't want to do it half ass. So I was really happy I waited, um, or I took this time to really find the right partners to work with. And uh, I'm very happy to have Matthias on board because he basically brings in like that really state of the art technology and, and all his research, and then I could combine that with my adjustments and my experience. And uh, I, I really think a lot of people, if they, they take the time and really work through it, will profit from it. And I'm happy to share that knowledge. So uh, I'm excited for it. Did you actually learn things from Matthias? Can we say that Fedor oh. also was coached in some ways? Oh, sure. I mean, I'm not, I'm not kidding. Like, I, I uh, definitely made significant jumps going through the lectures because... I was obviously, I mean, I was doing the course just like 10 times more intense, right? Like I had to think about what does it mean? How can I phrase it? How can I bring it across? What's the point? What's the, you know, like, I mean, I know all the lectures by heart now, so it's it's really, really valuable for me uh, as well. And I'm, I feel ready uh, to jump back into the game. Oh my gosh, I love it. And that's, I mean, I think that's something a lot of players even have referenced or talked about is sometimes you get burnt out or uh, whatever it is, taking a step away from the game maybe sometimes is the best thing you can do to re-inspire yourself or to bring back that love. For sure, let's see. I, I can't wait to see you. I also, I'll be there right after you. I came home for a little bit, but we'll be there. And we will, of course, keep you guys updated as Fedor gets to day seven of the World Series of Poker main <laughs> event. He's going to be a very busy guy. But I appreciate you taking the time and, and being so patient with us. And, uh, yeah, I'll just look forward to seeing you in a week-ish, two weeks, something. I'm looking forward to it, sir. All right, bye, Fedor. Deuces. Bye.